Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss uh, the uh, the uh, Euclidean plane and how to put a metric space, how, well, the metric space structure on the Euclidean plane. Okay, uh, so uh, let's define, oh, firstly we need to start with the basic set of uh, elements that we're going to define our metric space on. And the set that we're going to use is going to be uh, equal to R2. Now, I, I want to be very clear here, at the moment, R2 is one of those things where you uh, see it and it can be used, it's used to denote absolutely loads of different mathematical structures. Uh, you can think of this as a vector space over the real numbers, uh, you can think of it as, well, often you will think of it in terms of its metric space structure. Lots of that, all of this we're going to study in this course, uh, well in these videos, uh, in this video series. Uh, but for now, all R2 means is a set of a, B, of ordered pairs, A, B, where A is an element of the real numbers, and B is an element of the real numbers. So you take every possible ordered pair of real numbers, so that this, so if you like, fix B, fix, well actually let's say, fix A is a real number, and then let B vary over every other real number, take all of those, then move A a tiny little bit, uh, and basically let A go over every single real number, and for every single A, let B vary over every single real number, take every possible possible ordered pair and stick them into a set, that is what I am considering R2 to be. Uh, so at the moment it doesn't have any of those fancy vector space structure on it, it is just a set. Okay, so I'm going to define a uh, metric on this and uh, we're going to define the normal metric that you would associate with the two-dimensional plane. And um, so uh, the, met the distance between any two points, x and y, so where x and y are now elements of uh, R2, so I could write them as x is equal to uh, some real number x1, x2, and I could write y as being y1, uh, y2. So each of these is an ordered pair, so x and y are both ordered pairs of real numbers, uh, so they both have two coordinates. Okay, and the distance between these two points, x and y, so if you want a picture, we've got x over here, which is x1 and x2, and we've got y over here, which is y1 and y2, and the distance between them is going to be exactly the Pythagorean th uh, theorem formula. Okay, so I'm going to get another piece of paper, so we'll try and keep the picture. Uh, okay, so the distance between x and y, distance between the two points, x and y, I'm going to define to be equal to uh, the square root of uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 oh sorry no that's terrible terrible absolutely rubbish absolute rubbish y1 minus x1 so we take the distance the difference in the first component and then we take the difference in the second component here and we square that so we're basically saying take this component this dis distance this difference here so this is um, this is uh, y1 here minus x1 here and then take this difference over here which is y2 and this is x2 over here okay uh, so uh, that is the uh, Pythagorean uh, theorem basically it's the same formula that you learned years ago okay uh, so uh, the uh, real the R2 space with this metric uh, so this is just a set, remember, and now what we've done is we've made it a spe uh, we've made it into a metric space by putting this metric on. And I haven't proven to you that this is a metric yet. I will in a moment. Well, I'm not going to prove it because it's actually quite difficult. We'll prove it later. Uh, proving that this obeys the triangle inequality is not totally easy, even though it's it, it, it's the uh, motivation for defining the triangle inequality. Actually, proving that this that this uh, symbolic structure here does obey the triangle inequality isn't so trivial, uh, but this. This is called the Euclidean plane. Uh, so the Euclidean plane is the set along with the metric, the Euclidean metric. Uh, so this sometimes is called the Euclidean metric on R2. Euclidean metric. Okay, uh, and what we're going to see is that there are other, other, um, other metrics that you can define on R2 which are non-Euclidean. Okay, uh, so um, let's, let's at least get some intuition as to why this is a metric. So the first uh, the first property was that d of x, y should be an element of uh, the non-negative real numbers. Okay, uh, so let's try and make sure of that one then. Uh, so uh, y1 minus x1 is always going to be equal to a, 
is always going to be equal to, uh, well, y1 minus x1 squared, that's always going to be a positive real number. Similarly, y2 minus x2 squared is always going to be a positive real number. The square root function, the way I am defining the square root function, is as this. Uh, so, like that. So, uh, you ascribe... Um, to every value of the positive real numbers, you ascribe another positive real number. So uh, this is x, and this is uh, the square root of x, if you like. Uh, so uh, remember, the square root function does not include the um, does not include the bit down here. It's basically, if you look at the parabola x squared, uh, so this. Uh, take rotate this around and get rid of this bit. Basically, rotate it round uh, 90 degrees clockwise, and this is the curve we've got here. Okay, so it maps a positive real number onto a positive real number. So uh, this is going, and it maps zero onto uh, zero. So the only way that the square root of something can be equal to zero is if that number is zero. Uh, so yes, this is going to map you onto another positive real number. So tick, that's done. Uh, two, uh, that the distance between x and x is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so if the two points are exactly the same, uh, then uh, we get x1 minus x1 squared plus y... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, x2 minus x2 squared. Uh, now these are both going to be equal to 0, so we get 0 plus 0, which is 0. The square root of 0 is 0, so we'll get that the distance is 0. Tick. And similarly, if the square root is equal to 0, then we know that the thing you're taking the square root of must be 0. We've got, we're adding two positive real numbers because we've got these squares here. So the po two positive real, the only way you can add two positive real numbers and get 0 is if both are 0. Sorry, uh, I should have been saying two non-negative real numbers rather than positive. Positive means, uh, strictly means, um, uh, not, uh, well, it means, uh, it, it doesn't, it, zero is not positive. Zero is neither positive or negative. So I should say non-negative um, real numbers rather than positive. Okay, uh, so we're adding two non-negative real numbers together and getting zero, and the only way you can do that is if both of them are zero, uh, which would imply that y1 is equal to x1 and y2 is equal to x2. Okay, uh, so that ticks off that one. Uh, now the next property, uh, three, is symmetry, that the distance between x and y uh, which is equal to the square root of y1 minus x1 squared uh, plus y2 minus x2 squared. Uh, well, that's clearly going to be equal to x1 minus y1 squared, because the squaring uh, doesn't care uh, which way you subtract them, uh, plus x2 minus y2 squared. So when you square them, it just makes it... it, it, it Obviously, y1 minus x1 is the negative of x1 minus y1, uh, but when you square negative 1, it just goes to 1 anyway. Uh, so this is equal to the distance between y and x. So it, do it does obey symmetry. Now, the final property, that the distance, the distance between x and y uh, is less than or equal to the distance between x and z, plus the distance between z and y, I am going to wave my hands up for the time being uh, by saying that, you know, uh, this notion of distance is the classical one. It's the Euclidean one, the one that you all learnt in school. Uh, if you have two points, x and y, it's ascribing the distance between these to be equal to the length of the line between them. So if I take any other point, z, over here, and I uh, work out the length of that line, and I add the length of that line, which is, uh, to highlight this again, uh, the distance between x and z is this bit here. Uh, the distance between uh, z and y is going to be this bit here, so I should label the points. So this is x and this is y. And uh, the distance between x and y here is this bit here, this is hypotenuse. Uh, well, if it's a right angle triangle, I think you'd call it that. Um, so uh, the length, and um, it's a theorem from classical geometry, uh, from Euclidean geometry, that the length of uh, the length of this, uh, the length of a single side of the triangle is always less than or equal to the sum of the other two sides, and it would be uh, equal to the sum of the other two sides if the z point was actually on this straight line between x and y. Uh, so uh, we're just going to. Uh, that's a wavy handy sort of that's the intuition for why that's true uh, but as I say in upcoming videos we will prove this using the Minkowski inequality but we haven't proven the Minkowski inequality yet so um, we can't do it yet okay